The Rumble Johnson fight was uh, a tough one for you to swallow, too, because it was in Stockholm. It was this enormous event. Everybody was there to see yeah. you. And um, in that fight, we didn't pick it up while the fight was going on, but you guys collided heads. Yeah. Yeah, it was a headbutt. Yeah. It was a I'm not. I'm not taking anything away from Anthony Johnson. He, that guy is a beast, and he hits a hot, he's one of the hardest hitters in the, in the no in sport. No so, doubt. I mean, no, oh, oh, he's out. My. He's out. He's going to finish it right here. Interesting. Oh, oh my. Just right there. Shot in the eye. Oh. And fucked him. Oh, man. That. And now Kyle tries there to go. He's not down. He's out. It's over. Oh. It's over. It is all over. Anthony Rumble Johnson. On the evening of November the 13th, a former UFC fighter, Jake Shields let the whole MMA community know about terrible news. A former title contender in the world's best league, Anthony Rumble Johnson, passed away at 38 years of age due to a long-lasting illness. Today, we would like to honour this great fighter who even outside the cage was desperately fighting for his life. Dear friends, we bring you five fights when Rumble shocked the MMA world. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Friends, we created a boxing channel not too long ago. If you're interested in boxing related content, please subscribe to our new channel. Thank you. Ryan Bader, UFC on Fox 18. On January the 30th of 2016, Anthony Johnson shared the octagon with the current Bellator star, who became especially famous after beating Fedor Emelianenko. Ryan Bader. It was a second fight for Rumble in the world's best league. While Bader has already been competing in the UFC since 2008, and for the next eight years amassed a rather decent record of 16 wins and four losses. They faced each other at UFC on Fox 18 in the main event of the evening. He's right there with the best. Um, I mean, he's fought the who's who of mixed martial arts so far, except for Alexander and, and uh, Danny. Um, I mean, well, he's in a five-fight win streak. And he's he, he's legit. He's not a he's nothing to play with. You can't take him for granted. I haven't thought about it at all. You know, there's been so much talk about a title shot for Bader. It hasn't crossed my mind what's next for me. I'm, I'm just here to fight. Anthony showed one of his best professional career performances in this fight. In the very beginning after the bell rang, Bader dived into Anthony's legs. However, Rumble reacted in time and immediately defended the takedown. A minute later, fighters found themselves right at the fence from where Rumble brutally smashed the highly promising American till he was completely shut down. A great performance from Johnson. Just like that. I definitely um, have enough time to get ready for whoever they put in front of me now. Um, nothing happened to me this fight. I'm not injured, so uh, I just keep going forward and see what happens. Antonio Nogueira, UFC on Fox 12. Anthony Johnson's second fight after his return happened in July of 2014 at UFC on Fox 12. He was up against the twin brother of Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira, a famous Brazilian fighter and a former world champion, Antonio Rogério. Even though the second brother did not conquer world championships, he beat many well-known fighters and was no less famous for his mastery in the fighting circles. At that moment, Rumble was already on the streak of seven unconditional wins, four of which were stoppages. And in his last fight at UFC 172, he beat Phil Davis and was looking to break straight into the top of his division. It made me focus more for sure, you know, because I know that, you know, the performance I had, you know, with Phil Davis, I have to be having an even better performance with this fight with Little Nog. I've been watching his fight for a long time. Uh almost three months and he's very good he's very tough he fought in that uh, another WSOF no he fought very well seven maybe seven times out the OFC he's very dangerous but I can't very prepared to fight with this guy Anthony Johnson delivered the performance of the night he knocked Nogueira out in just 44 seconds after the very first two exchanges it was over before Herb Dean knew it Rumble scared every opponent with his power inside the octagon. He's, you know, when you face a guy like Noguera, you kind of think like, okay, this is about to be a battle because the last name Noguera stands out and it means a lot. You know, those guys fight with a lot of pride. 
but I knew I had to to finish him or hurt him really bad with the judges or anybody didn't have any second guesses and like think that he won. So I'm glad it ended that way. Jimmy Manua, UFC 191. The fight between Jimmy Manua happened prior to Anthony's bout with Ryan Bader at UFC 191 in September of 2015. After losing to Daniel Cormier at 118th event, Rumble wanted to bounce back and earn another opportunity to get back on the championship path. At that time, Manua was considered unbeatable before facing a legendary Alexander Gustafsson. However, after he was defeated by the Swedish, Jimmy already managed to rehabilitate by winning against Jan Blakowicz. I love what I do. I love my job. I have fun. I love staying in shape, getting in shape, I should say, and uh, just fighting, you know, so fight and do what I love to do and get paid for. Why not? The fight started with a vicious clash on the feet. Rumble moved forward and tried to take his opponent's head. Manua also tried to keep up. He did his best to oppose Anthony and because of that managed to survive a dangerous first round. It wasn't meant for him to get out of the second one. A heavy right hook knocked Jimmy Manua out cold. After losing to DC, Anthony Rumble Johnson successfully returned in a dominant fashion. I knew he was a little bit worried. I mean, nobody can say they're not worried about my strike and I know they're worried. But um, I, I definitely wanted to see what he can do on his back. Glover Teixeira, UFC 202. After coming back in the UFC with two stoppage wins against Jimmy Manua and Ryan Bader, Anthony Johnson faced a future UFC champion in Glover Teixeira. At that moment, the Brazilian was on a three-fight stoppage win streak and slowly but confidently moved towards his goal. In August of 2016, he met with the terrifying Rumble. His fight was the co-main event of UFC 202 that was headlined by Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz. You've got a lot of respect for your opponent, Glover Teixeira. Talk to me about why you get it done on Saturday night. Say what? Why do you get, why do you get the win? Oh, why do I get the win? Because I'm going to try and whoop his ass. That's just what it is. I mean, but that's just the name of the game. He's going to try and whoop mine. I'm going to try and whoop his. He's a warrior. I respect him. His camp is awesome. He's very polite, you know what I mean? Whenever we saw each other yesterday, we showed each other some love. And that's just what it's all about. It's about respect. And That fight was one of the best on the card and the whole year of 2016. Rumble needed only 13 seconds to slay Glover Teixeira with a deadly uppercut. Everything happened so quickly that the Brazilian couldn't even come to his senses. He barely recovered, but began to wrestle the referee in Dan Miragliota. That's how heavy Anthony Johnson landed on him. Spectacular performance. Not 13 seconds, but I knew I would knock him out eventually. And I had pictured it for a while now. And I told my coach this morning, I said, if I knock Glover out, it's going to be by uppercut. And it worked out. Alexander Gustafsson. The fight with the legendary Swedish took place in January of 2015. After Rumble stopped Rogerio Nogueira, he went straight at Alexander Gustafsson, who at that time was seen as one of the main figures in the light heavyweight division and lost only twice in his professional career, to Phil Davies in the FAR 2010 and to the undisputed champion in John Jones via decision. This fight happened at UFC Fight Night in Stockholm, and quite frankly, nobody betted on Rumble that day. Everybody thought that Anthony went out there to get killed and Gustafsson would dismantle him in a couple of rounds. He's awesome. He's awesome. Um, look at his fight with John Jones. That's, that speaks for itself. Um, like I said, he's a, he's, a, he's a great fighter, very elusive, good boxer. You know, he uses his reach really well. Um, he fights tall. You know, he's very hard to hit. I mean, what can you not say about the guy? I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I will be the best Alex ever yeah. when I'm fighting Anthony. Uh, he'll probably be the best Anthony ever. So I can just say it's going to be it fireworks for sure. It's going to be an explosive fight and it can go like, you know, I will win the fight. That fatal night in Stockholm was not the best one for the local fan and betting favorite in Alexander Gustafsson. In about two minutes, Anthony Rumble shocked everyone. He put his masterful work on full display and earned a sensational win via first round TKO. This performance left nobody indifferent. Rumble rightfully proved that he is one of the most dangerous fighters in the organization and everybody should reckon with him. Um, Alex did everything that I thought he was going to do. He's an amazing athlete. 
I feel bad just because he's crying. You know what I mean? It, I'm, I'm an emotional guy, so I, I feel his pain. But uh, I want to say thank you, Stockholm, for having me here tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. And uh, John Jones, you know what I'm saying? I hope you get well, brother. Let's get this championship fight on man and make the crowd and the fans excited about this. Extra spot. In this spot, we have three more fights in the career of Anthony Johnson. The first one we're going to talk about happened during the time when Rumble left UFC and competed in the organization called WSOF. At the very first tournament that happened on November the 3rd of 2012, he fought the American fighter DJ Linderman. Interesting fact, when Rumble competed in this promotion, he even moved up in weight and performed at the heavyweight class. But that came a little bit later. Most importantly, he hasn't lost his speed. On the contrary, he became better and stronger because of the mass gain. Fighters started off rough. Anthony was on a permanent hunt for his opponent's head. Already a minute later, the fight had to be paused due to an accidental groin strike from Johnson, even though he threw a low kick to the leg. Lindemann couldn't recover for a very long time. It took him two minutes to do so, but the most interesting stuff was ahead. Soon, the fight continued. A minute later, the fight went to the ground. Rumble spent some time battering his opponent. When they finally stood up, Lindemann went for an illegal eye poke. Johnson let Herb know that he wasn't all right, but the referee didn't react. The American fighter went forward trying to cut the distance, to which Rumble responded with a heavy right straight that completely shut Lindemann down. DJ got hit so hard that he simply dropped dead with no chances to recover. The first brutal performance from Rumble at a new place. The next time Anthony Johnson entered the octagon was only in March of the next year at WSOF2. He shared the octagon with Andre Olovsky in the main event of the evening and put on a spectacular show. This bout went the whole three rounds and for that time Rumble delivered an amazing performance. He dominated Olovsky in every season and won every exchange. He constantly imposed his game, threatened with takedowns and masterfully drained the fighter from Belarus. Already at the end of the first round, he was extremely close to earning a desired win. And at first when Anthony knocked Andre down and went for a finish, everybody thought that he won, but things were not so simple. In fact, it was just the end of the round and then the fight continued. But even in that, Olovsky couldn't offer anything worthy to his vis-a-vis. -vis. Well, maybe you can count for a groin strike for a worthy attack, but such actions are often considered unacceptable in professional sport. So basically, he didn't do anything. In the conclusion of three one-sided rounds, Anthony Johnson won by unanimous decision. And the third fight of Rumble we would like to talk about took place on January the 18th of 2014 at WSOF 8. He was up against the terrifying American Mike Kyle, who had variable success competing in local organizations. It was exclusively a stand-up fight, and this time Rumble Johnson needed only two minutes to complement his list of spectacular knockouts with another fighter. In one of the sequences at the fence, when Robbie Lawler's protege outside of the UFC went forward, Anthony threw a cutting right hand. The American literally ripped Kyle's head off and sent him to the Shadow Realm. In just three fights in a new organization, Rumble showed himself in a quite impressive manner and confidently proved that regardless of the weight class, he is still freaking dangerous, if not more than that. There it is guys, Anthony Johnson was a great fighter, truly great. His contribution to this sport cannot be over-evaluated. He was able to deliver beautiful fights for the fans and did it every time he stepped in the octagon. He was a true warrior who courageously fought both inside and outside of the cage. No matter what anybody says, this man is forever in the fans' hearts because he was a sincere, dedicated and strong person. He fought against a severe illness for many years. He didn't talk much. He always tried to keep in touch with his loyal fans and mentally put them in the right place. He fought for his life till the very end and hoped he could be cured. In 2021, he announced his comeback. After a four year long layoff, he competed at Bellator 258 and knocked his opponent out in the second round. 
he promised to replicate his success in 2022. Unfortunately, the illness happened to be stronger. We will miss you, Great Rumble. Rest in peace, legend. We will never forget you. Friends, we created a boxing channel not too long ago. If you're interested in boxing-related content, please subscribe to our new channel. Thank you.